Hey everyone, it's March 13th, 2023. Uh, there is a video that I've already recorded that's gonna come up on St. Patrick's Day, which is also Tiberius's birthday. I'll probably do a happy Tiberius James video. That's our orange cat for any of you who are wondering. Yeah, I know, he's a cat, too bad he's getting a birthday. Anyway, just is a little bit of input here between videos and whatnot. I do want to let you guys know about some of the stuff coming up this year personal project wise now most of you know i started a little teachable page it's teachable.com it's called the arcos institute on geosciences you pay a little bit and you take tests after watching videos and stuff like that i will be redo not redoing but doing like a test before I have this basic test up there that is supposed to assess your geologic knowledge now I don't expect anyone to ever really pass it that's not the point of it the point is to see where you should start out with the lectures and uh, I guess a lot of people are taking it personally and it was never meant to be that I apologize so I'll either rework that Maybe I'll divide it into three, you know, basic, a middle, and advanced, so you can see where you can go. Maybe something like that. So that's an option for there. Um, something else, there's another one coming up on Teachable about geologic time, and it's not just me going through geologic time periods and spouting about what happened, you know, during each period, during each era or whatever you know it's just not regurgitation of stuff you're going to see online i go into the origin of some of these how we got to where we are with this the history of it which is often overlooked i mean you can go anywhere on youtube and find out why the cambrian is called the cambrian and you know it, it, i don't need to tell you that stuff unless i'm bleeding somewhere with it then then i will so that's coming out, and that's going to probably be a three or four parter to already down, and I'm nowhere near done. That one's a combination of me like this, lecturing at the dry erase board, and it's also me and the computer with slides talking to you and stuff like that. There will be tests for that one, but they're not, you don't have to pass them or anything. If you just take them, you'll get your certificate, I think, because it's a low level beginner course is what it is but i'm going to assume at least you know what geologic time is and if i say cretaceous period you know what that is so it's not base base level but you know it's it's closer to it uh let's see what else is there so other than that for teachable i'm probably not going to do anything for a couple months because the field season is starting to gear up probably can't tell by the snow behind me but it's actually not that cold out it's about one degree centigrade right now even though it is snowing which is what 34 degrees fahrenheit i think something like that which to me isn't that cold but i do need to wait till some of the snow melts and i but i gotta do it before the trees and stuff start budding because what i'm gonna do and either well, late March, we're going, which is this month, we're going back up north to the UP because to visit my mom because we haven't seen her since Christmas. So we're going to do that. But early April or something like that, mid-April maybe, we are going to go back up to the Baraboo area. And I did buy a drone. I did do that. I have not even <laughs> tried to run it yet when it hasn't been snowy which is no big deal it's been wet we've had a very wet winter not a very snowy cold one but a very wet one and i don't want to mess the thing up so hopefully for baraboo we'll have that at least a couple shots but what i'm going to do for baraboo it's going to be a structural geology video it's going to focus on structural geology. We aren't going to go very much through the stratigraphy. We'll have to a little bit. We aren't going to go very much through, you know, the petrology, although we ha will have to a little bit. We have learned a lot about the Baraboo, what they call the Baraboo Interval. Interval is not a G... Oh, the wind just kicked up. Oh, an interval is not a recognized geologic division of anything but it 
became started to become used i think in the 60s before and maybe no 80s i think it was early 80s which was before the north american stratigraphic code and long before any international stratigraphic guide came out but there's no such thing as an interval and it applies to all these red purple quartzites throughout the midwest uh, South Dakota Sioux, Minnesota Sioux Quartzite. You got a ton in Wisconsin, Baraboo, Waterloo, Rib Mountain, Thunder Mountain, Flambeau, Barron. Those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. These are all about the same age. Now there's lots of older quartzites in the Midwest, but there's not too many younger ones than that. There's a few. We've got a age lock down, we think. We pulled a lot of detrital zircons in 2020 to get a lot of, we basically solidified the existing hypothesis that all these quartzites are correlative temporally and lithostratigraphically. But we also got a good span of detrital zircon dates and we do have, I think it's a Waterloo that has an intrusion in it, what's been dated, but it, the date is Wolf River, which is 1450 million years ago, 1,450 or 1 1.45 billion years ago. So it has to be older than that. And we've gotten detrital zircons for a long time from these things that are around the Pinocchio orogeny, some a little younger, about the Yapvai, uh, accretion stuff like that but this time we just went crazy and the youngest ones we got are actually very early very beginning of the mesoproterozoic around the paleoproterozoic mesoproterozoic lines set at 1600 million years ago 1.6 billion years ago. We pretty much guessed these quartzites were about 1.65 to 1.75 billion, but they actually look like they're more like 1.45 to maybe, or no, sorry, not 1.45, 1. Is that correct? No, 1.65 to about 1. Uh, what is it, 5.5, five, five, I think, something like that. And the Baraboo interval at the type section of Baraboo actually is not just quartzite. It has other units within it, which indicates it was kind of on the edge of a, uh, of a margin near C. And so that's basically, in a nutshell, the Baraboo, uh, you know, history of it. Plus, now that we know that... Uh, what else did we, we also figured something interesting out. We got a lot of really old zircons and you might be like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, if it's one and a half to 1.6 billion years ago, if you get 3 billion year old zircons, which we did, I think we got 3.1 actually was our oldest, might even be a little earlier than that. Anyway, there's no rocks in this area that are that old except for the near the waters meet dome the problem with that is based on paleo current direction there's no way that could have sourced the more northern young, old dates which we do have some and that would have been buried very quickly anyway because it's not high to topographic relief today and it wasn't at 1.6 billion years ago either if not less so we got you know, those old zircons, and some might even be older than the waters meet. I don't remember off the top of my head. So, th what does this mean? Well, this means the only place they could have been derived on Laurentia, which is Paleo North America, is from North, what we refer to now as Northwest Territories of Canada during, uh, during the early slave craton, stuff like that with a very old craton. North America, big cratons are basically the superior craton, which is where, just south of that's where all these quartzites exist, or actually on the fringe of it, on the south side. And then to the northwest, we got the slave craton, and I think a couple others, I forget, because I don't really study that area in detail, so I tend to forget. But they had to be in derived from there, which means that these quartzites probably covered a much larger area than they do now. What that means is a lot of people sit there and like to say at the beginning of the Cambrian, we had the sock sequence, which is true. And we had these sands just covering North America. Well, they didn't cover North America in its entirety, but it came close and eventually it grades up into carbonates, but it happened really quick and 
you know, a certain group of people use that as evidence of a certain thing that I, I don't know. But anyway, that was, it, it took several million years for that to occur. Not a ton of time, maybe 10 million years, something like that. But now we know with this Baraboo, that's not the only time that has happened. One billion years earlier, it happened with these quartzites. So we don't just have this quick transgression, quick in geologic terms, quick transgression over Laurentia of sand deposits. Quartzite, the protolith of his sand, quartz aronite sand. I'm sorry, I should have said that earlier. So it's not the first time it happened at the Cambrian, pre-Cambrian, Cambrian boundary. It also happened you know, back then too. And it didn't do it the whole continent of North America. There was dry land in North America and the Cambrian transgressions, the Sox sequence in certain parts out West, we were already had sea level coming in during the pre-Cambrian. So there's no unconformity there. Anyway, I'm digressing. The point of going to Baraboo <laughs> is to focus on structural geology. That's why I gave you that just big lecture. Structural geology. Uh, we first discovered how to predict mountain ranges before we knew about plate tectonics. I hope that made sense. So before we had a mechanism of mountain building, orogenies, we knew the inner workings of orogenies. I know that sounds weird, but in the late 19th, early 20th century, people like Leith, Van Heys, Atwood, all these pioneers of you know 20th and 21st century geology, figured stuff out there, and I've said this before, the workings of mountains was not figured out in the Himalayas, it wasn't figured out in the Alps, it wasn't figured out in the Andes, it wasn't figured out in the Rockies, it was figured out in South Central Wisconsin. And when I take you there and do this video, which is going to be unteachable, I'm not going to do it for free, I may do a bridged one for free on YouTube, but you know, I, I want people to learn, I'll do a more generic one that's not a technical probably for YouTube but they figured all this stuff out in South Central Wisconsin and there's reasons for that the Baraboo Syncline was involved in an orogeny mountain building event back then they didn't know how these things formed all kinds of weird hypotheses hypotheses and they also didn't know about the accretions further to the south the Yapavai and the Mazatal I believe that's how it's pronounced so they didn't know about those but they saw this and they took measurements of this rock and they tried to make predictions of it because one of the great questions was, is this thing an anticline or a syncline? Because they didn't know. And using these measurements that they took and hypothesizing and extrapolating, but not crazy extrapolating, you know, extrapolating enough to make their hypotheses testable, later drilling confirmed it. So we know these techniques work. And why South Central Wisconsin? Why not the Rockies? Why not the Himalayas? Why not the Alps? Well, I can answer that partially. Part of the reason is because just of where geology was globally at the time, it was very developing pretty much in Europe and North America at that time. Uh, so places like Asia and South America, they, they really weren't doing any work then. They do now. They do a lot of good work. So that's part of it. But another reason is the Baraboo Syncline in the Baraboo area is fold dominated. It's not fault dominated. So we have ductile deformation. And it looks now that when these quartzites were deposited as quartz sand, that they were indurated and metamorphosed almost simultaneously, which explains why there's not a lot of faulting. Uh, because they're closer to the Wolf River event than we thought they were. So, anyway, before I get too tangenting, we're coming up on 15 minutes here, uh, the folding allowed us to draw conclusions and predictions from measurements, things like cleavage, and they identified stress fields and things like that. Pompelli's rule is expressed in one awesome place, which I'm gonna take you to. I'm gonna take you to Van Heys Rock, I'm gonna take you back to Abelman's Gorge, I'm gonna do different stuff. Probably take you to Baxter Hollow. Uh, probably take you, I don't know if I'm gonna take you guys to Devil's Lake again. Um, I Well, I will for the 
Pompelli's rule because that's where it's exposed. But I don't think I'm going to get up on the court sites there. And plus, uh, Stewart and Stewart with the Wisconsin Geological Natural History Survey have done a new geologic map, it's the first one since the 70s, at any decent scale. I've done some, others have done some, but they're more on just small areas of the entire Baraboo Quadrangle, seven and a half minute quadrangle. And they divided, we all have known that the Baraboo Quartzite could probably be divided into members. We've all known this for a long time, just no one ever has. And they did it informally. They haven't done it formally. Maybe they will, I don't know, but they've recognized four member type things. I'm gonna say facies because, um, you know, members are actual formal things. I mean, you can use it lay, layman's term too. Okay, we're coming up on 16 minutes. Well, anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope if you're interested in Baraboo, the area and the structural geology and how we got to where we are with that, hopefully you'll watch my uh, Arcos Institute of Geosciences. I won't charge you that much for it, but it will be lengthy. And I probably will have tests, but maybe it won't be graded. So just to see, check yourself and see if you've, how much of it you've absorbed. And I don't know, maybe $10, maybe 13. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I hope you learned something.